Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another C Sharp tutorial to you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with validating a date using C Sharp. So let's get right into it. The situation is you've asked the user to input their date of birth, and you want to make sure they have inputted a valid date. And by valid, we mean can that date exist in the past or in the future? Obviously, you might want to check if it's in the future after validating if the date is valid because you don't want someone who's born in the future because most likely they're lying. They might be time traveling, but I'd bet money on the fact that they're lying about their date of birth. So let's get right into how we're going to do it. So firstly, in our main method, we've got string date input equals 26th of February 2021. So this is just a string to represent user input. Then we're going to do console.write line is valid date. I'm going to pass in our date input string. We're going to print out the result of this function that we are going to define in a moment. And down below, we've got public static bool is valid date string date. So this is going to be a Boolean function. It's going to be called is valid date. And we're going to pass in a string and we're going to call that string date. This is going to be the user input we're going to validate. On the first line, we're going to do date time temp object. So we're going to just create a little date time object. And we're going to call it temp object because we're literally going to use this to do an attempt pass of our user input into it to validate if the date is valid or not. And on the second line, we're going to do return date time dot try pass date, which is our string here, then the keyword out, and then we're going to do temp object, which is our date time object we created on the line above. So what's going to happen is uh, the try pass function will return a true or a false. It will return a true if the pass was successful and will return a false if it wasn't. So what we're going to do is we can pass in our string and then we can attempt to pass it into an object we specify. In this case, we're going to be with a date time object. And if it's successful, then it's clearly valid. So we return a true. If it's unsuccessful, we return a false, which means it's invalid because a date time object is only going to accept a valid date. And this does work with multiple date formats. So if you're in the USA, you can do month, day, year. If you're in the UK, you can do day, month, year. But there does come one little problem. When we just do try pass, we're actually asking it to use the current culture format of our system, which means you might not be able to dictate the specific date format that you want. Fortunately, there's going to be an eye up in the corner, which will take you to a tutorial, which will go into how to do this using a more advanced method, which will allow you to have complete control over which date culture format you want to try and validate with. So click the eye up in the corner if you're interested in that. And that's basically it. So we're going to hit control S and we're going to hit play. And it returns a true because the 26th of February 2021 is a valid date. Let's try the 32nd, which would return false. As you can see, it returned a false because that's not a valid date for any month. Now we're going to do the 29th of February of 2021. This should be a false because 2021 is not a leap year. 2020 was a leap year though, and in more than one sense, it's a year we all wish we could have just skipped, as well as the fact it has 29 days in February as opposed to 28. And it returns a false because 2021 isn't a leap year. But if we change this to 2020, and then hit Control S, and then hit play, it returns a true because there are 29 days in February in 2020. Now we're going to do one more because it's a classic meme of this channel. We're going to do the 31st of April. And this is going to return a false. 
and it returns false, obviously. And that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like in the comments if you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if you want more C-sharp tutorials. And share with your friends if you think this might help them. I really like seeing multiple people comment on a video at a similar amount of time saying, Hey, you discovered this tutorial as well for so-and-so's class. I, I just like seeing that, so if we could see more of that, that would be great. Thanks for being a great audience.